Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Daddy's Corner, and this is the review for Ready to Love. Okay, let's get it started. Anyway, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and look at my whole J-Bird. J-Bird. Dun, 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 dun. And all that goodness. Okay, all that goodness. Do not forget to also like, comment, and share this video. To hit that notification bell to let you know I have new videos. And also follow me on IG and or Twitter at J underscore leads underscore corner. I'm pretty sure it's on the screen unless I forgot. Okay. Y'all know most, well, all of the people on the show. So I don't have a, you know, picture like that or whatever. But we gonna get what we gonna get. Okay. So we see the men all meet up at the cigar bar. The power is in their hands this episode. So one woman has to go. So with six, they're going to take it down to five. Okay? Down to five. Now, I said last week, I think it was going to be either Kimber or Reva. I feel the same thing this week. So, we then see, you know, this week they're going to be meeting with the ladies' best friends or close friends, their associates or whatever. So, I'm going to get more information about the women and stuff. I said, oh, okay. So, first, we have Ashima and Darren. So, Ashima and Darren, I said before, we do not see them on dates. We have not seen them at much at all, even though they both said how they both like each other. I ain't saying they lying. I'm not saying they lying, but I'm, I'm, I feel like, how are you not showing the couple who says they're, you know, feeling each other the most? I just don't understand that. I feel like, you know, to keep focusing in on, you know, uh, um, London and, and Alexis and Mario and Tandy and uh, De uh, Divine, I feel like they're picking who they're going to pick already, okay? But I, it is what it is. So again, this is Ashima and Darren, as we see, don't see them a lot, we see them right now, okay? So Darren brings up how um, he knows to impress her, he has to impress her friends. So if he don't impress her friends, ain't nothing going to be going down between them two, okay? Now, it was a good little little date, little look little, little uh drink session. Um, sitting there when they wasn't at dinner. It was like a little drink, like a little bar, you know, whatever. So we do see her manager is one of her friends who's there, and she brings up like you know she would be on the road or whatever a lot. So she'd be busy sometimes. Like how would you handle that? He said, you know, I know, you know what I'm saying. I that's fine with me as long as when she's home, we get our alone time. We get we get time together. I'm fine with that. He's like also. You know, if time permits, I'll go on a road with her, you know, here, there, whatever. And I said, well, that's, that's a good way to think, bring up things or whatever. Um, then we then see how, um, they like how he puts a smile on her face. Okay, she do look happy with them, but again, we don't see them together much, so I'm like, like I don't know. Um, he brings up how he has dogs. Her friend said, oh, she don't like dogs. He said, yeah, she kind of never mentioned that or whatever, but we also have not talked about it. I guess he has, like, multiple dogs. More than one or whatnot. And so, you know, it's like, oh, they be, in, they be in the room. He like, well, yeah, I've woken up and they been in the bed or whatever. You know, yeah. But no, nah, she's like, I do what they can't do, so they can't be in the bed. And they all laugh. I also don't like dogs, so I would not date a man with a dog. Because I don't want a dog. I don't, I don't want dogs in my house. I'm not a, I'm not an animal person at all. Um, no. I want someone that can talk to me and tell me what they need and what's going on. Okay, or if I have a dog, it can't be an in, inside the house dog, it needs to be an outside dog. But it's too cold here for that. So, guess what? I don't do I don't date men with dogs. I dated a guy with a dog, nah, nah, was not a good thing anyway. Um, he also brings up how he don't like how she's telling him his dogs can't be in his room or his dogs can't be in the bedroom or his dog came in the house. If you put dogs before a woman, what's something? Something ain't right. You know what I'm saying, but I'm like, she not saying like, don't get your get rid of the dog. She's like, I just don't want the dogs in the bedroom. I don't think dogs should be in the bedroom. No, keep their ass in every other room except the bedroom. Mm, mm, mm. We then see Reva. Reva has Mario meet her friends, and this picture right here sums up the whole evening. If you ask me, okay, he looking like what's going on now? What's going on next? And she looking the other way, not paying any attention to what he is going through. Okay, 
Reva, to me, is fake. And I don't mean fake as in she's a bad person. I mean fake as in she's not ready to love and she should go home, okay? I just, mm -mm. I still don't like her her, her uh, wigs. You know, this one particularly because this one has a thick beard. Uh, I mean, I hate when the lace fronts are so thick, okay? Um, but it just looks weird. And I just, you know, no. I just don't. I don't like it. And anyway, so, but she still has him meet her friends. One of her friends was Erica Dixon from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And I said, oh, see, mm -mm. someone trying to get a story laugh or someone else, and I don't like it. But I digress. So, you know, they talk, talking or whatever, and the friends um, had a jar, and they had questions in the jar that he would pull and he would answer. I'm like, oh, that's a, I think, whatever. So he get there, and they have all these questions, but mainly because she told her friends, hey, he's interested in someone else. It's between me and, and another girl or whatever. This girl named Tandy. And I was like, mm, ain't gonna be good. So they pulled out the jar. He starts answering questions or whatever. They asked about, like, the last relationship. He said, well, I was married. For a couple of years, we got divorced and everything or whatever, MCM, but it was ma mainly because we had these major com uh, communication issues and I didn't want to get married again. Well, are you sure that's what it was? He's like, yes, I'm sure that's what it was. They then asked, like, did you and Reva have, like, you know what I'm saying, has y'all been intimate in any way, like a kiss or whatever? And they both said, well, no, no, not yet. And then Reva says, but he has kissed the other girl, okay? They be kissing, kissing. If I'm on a dating show and the dude is kissing, kissing another girl and we ain't kissing, kissing at all, I'm not going to keep my interest in that man, for one. But I would, or, or, I would want us to get a stronger connection. I feel like they know this show is like a timed experiment or whatever, so you can't really use the same date and time last that you use in real life. And I'm not opposed to kissing the man on like the second or the first date. I've kissed men on I've kissed men on first dates, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm like I don't get why she ain't kiss that man or ask that man to kiss her. It's just weird to me. Okay, so they then asked the the friends ask him. Um, what well, you know, he said he felt like the athlete just shoot, 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 all these questions at him. And Reva, like, just looking the other way. La, 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 la. Like, not paying that any attention. She's not also helping him or defending him or just trying to have his back, okay? Because some, sometimes, let's say some walnuts. Um, sometimes, your friends do do too much. And when your friends are doing too much, you're like, oh, girl, okay, okay now let's, let's calm it on down. Reva let them ask whatever question. You just one at the other, other, other. And he like, okay, it's just it is what it is. So they then ask him, like, well, what do you like about Reva? And he says her personality and the fact that she is fun and loving. And they say, that's so basic. It's just so basic. I say, yeah, but Reva's. Personality is basic. Like, Reva sings basic. And not as in, you know, she don't sing. Like, she has a basic personality. I don't know how else to say it. Like, I, Reva to me is forgettable. Because she don't put herself out there at all. And I'm not saying she got to be out here, like, showboating. But, I mean, what do we, we don't, I, I remember her, her weaves. That's it. That, that I feel. What you want me to do? So, I mean, he gave basic response because she gives some basic, basic energy. She she gives basic energy. She's a, she has basic energy, okay? I don't have basic energy. Mm -mm, no Jesus, okay? But Reva seems to have a basic, you know, just a basic level of whatever it is. He then brings up, like you were saying, well, I see pretension on her, however, but she has these walls up, you know what I'm saying? And it's just difficult. And then the friend said, well, I would have walls up too if you date if you dating another woman or if you like someone else he said oh you know we all on this journey we're, we're all openly dating that's the point of the show that's the whole point of the show the issue i have is the women kind of picked one man or one man and left it that i think reva is grasping at straws i think reva has been doing that since the beginning i think the only reason she's still here is because it was other weak links who was there but, again, between her and Kimber, I don't see why they still here. But it is what it is. So, he brings up how, you know what I'm saying? Look, again, we're openly dating here or whatever, but I do see potential in her. So, Reba brings up how, you know what I'm saying? Well, I want, when I want something, I go for it. But I have to have all of you to do that. Well, then, this is not the show for you. Okay? And not that I think it's fair that the men have multiple choices. 
but also as a woman, if that's what you want, go after it, no matter if he's picking someone else. Because at least you can say, I wanted him. And I put my best foot forward, even if I don't win, at least I didn't bow out before I was even in the race. That's what I was saying, but I'm just saying. Okay, anyway, the friend then brings up when she said, how you know what I'm saying, when she wants someone, she goes after it. The friend, her friend then say, yeah, Reva, but also, you know, Reva, you also be having your skates on, meaning you always ready to slide up on out. Of whatever you win, like a, a real easy getaway. And I say, see, she ain't ready for love. If she was, her friends wouldn't say that. I'm just saying, because even if your history is that you are an easy escaper, your friends would also know, no, nah, she, she she different now. She's ready now. I'm just saying, it's just my opinion. You know, and she says that she keeps her guard up because, you know what I'm saying, you never know what's going to happen. What makes Mario say, you know what, I got to rethink some things. I, this is a good, this is a good thing. I got to rethink some things. I said, if you say so, girl. We then see Alexis has her friends meet up with Carrie. And I'm like, girl, I just, I don't see them as a couple. Look, this looks like a father talking to his daughter about the pitfalls of not wearing a condom. Okay, this is the condom talk with, you, with, with dear old dad. And you know, you like that? I'm listening intently. I'm just, it's just weird. So she brings up how she's been so focused on London. You know what I'm saying? But she owes it herself to see what else is out there. And so she going she going to carry. I said, well, okay. She brings my carry is older and he's far away from child's behavior. Because he's 51. He's 51. Okay, it, it is what it is. And I feel like Carrie's only shot in the house is Alexis. But Alexis also likes London. So again, you know, I feel like Carrie going and I'm going home because I feel like London's gonna probably pick um divine, but I digress. Anyway, so the friends ask, Well, how much older is he than you? Because she's like, she's like, her, like you know, he's a, he's older. She's like, oh, it's about 20 years. I'm like, girl, girl, girl. The friend, like, what? Oh, I can and, uh, that's too old. He's too old for you know what I'm saying. No, and the best friend is a guy. Because with three friends, the one guy was the best friend. And he said he don't think, what she said, he don't think nobody good enough for her. Well, at that rate, well, she will always be single. I'm just saying. So, they asked him, do we want kids? He said, yes, I do want kids. He said, the best part of my life was me being a single father. You know, we have my kids or whatever. Great, 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 great. You know what I'm saying? He brings up how the best thing a man can do is have his legacy through his own seed. I'm looking like, well, I guess, kudos to you for having a penis, okay? Anyway, because uh, what is a woman's legacy? Anyway, Alexa, I love how he wants children. Alexis wants kids. And so she just wants someone who wants kids, even if he's 51. And, I mean, I don't think he's going to be able to give you three kids. I just, he could because men had babies all up today to, to forever. Flav Flav had one here in his, what, 60s or 70s? I guess there's a lot going on. So the friend then say, well, are you, are you 51, right? Like, yeah. Well, why would you want to get married again and start all over? And it's like, don't you want to be chilling and single? I'm like, what? Spoken like a true young man who don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, boy, back. He said, you know, the a, a, a woman changes a man. You know what I'm saying? And she is a woman. And, you know, I, I'm willing to, you know, do whatever because I think she has potential. You know what I'm saying? I don't see a little girl or a young girl with her. You know, I don't date girls. I date women. You know what I'm saying? She's a woman. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I I guess so. And then he leaves or whatever. And I'm like, dang, kiss. You can tell he was kind of not going for it, but like she turned her head to where he couldn't even go for it. My thing is when you, if you like someone, I don't see a, a issue in giving them at least a peck on the lips. And Alexis has avoided pecking Carrie on the lips. You wonder why? Cause she don't want, she don't want that man. Even Mario and Reva, they avoid kissing. But, <laughs> something else happens. We then see London and Alexis meet up. Now, when London met with Alexis, this is what turned me off. I'm like, oh. he had on jewelry. Just, just two, the gold necklace, okay? The gold, or the gold chain. The gold chain with the gold and diamond watch and the gold and diamond bracelets. Okay, and the little studs in the ear. I feel like Carrie kept, not Carrie, 
London. London said before how he had only dated women and the, he kept attracting thoughts. Because you dress like a thought attractor, okay? Of course you're going to attract thoughts if you walk around with a gold jewelry on, brother. That is a thoughts magnet, okay? So you attract what you want. Just saying. And I'm like, oh, the gold. I'm like, really, Gary? Anyway, I just didn't like it. Not saying that men can't wear jewelry, but some about how he, I'm like, see, because he said I only attract thoughts. And I'm like, I wonder why. Now nah, I see why. He looked like if he had a club, thoughts will attract to that. I'm just saying. I, this, at least take the brace. Like, I think you don't need the necklace, the bracelet, and the, 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 and the watch. Take, maybe just the watch. Some simple. Just or just the bracelet, not all three, not all three, Gary. And I'm like, I just can't. And then, well, I'm gonna show up right now because he went to meet with um Divine later and he had on the silver, you know, a silver bracelet, the silver watch, and two silver chains. <sighs> thotting and bopping, thotting and bopping, thotting and bopping. Thought and then bopping, thought and then bopping it for it all. Ooh, that's what he doing, thought and then bopping it on up or whatever. Anyway, see, he had silver on, silver and gold is what he was wearing. And I didn't like it either time. To me, it's just, it's too much at once. It's just, too, it's seen too much. I don't like men who do that. Give And then he had a, a ring on too in the silver. Girl, bye. Anyway, he says how he spent a lot of time with divine but he has not spent that much time with alexis so he has questions he needs to figure out with alexis this to me they not gonna they're not gonna match up mainly because he keeps having this connection he has with divine but it's something about alexa he just hasn't figured out you don't want to i feel like i think you just keep her in your back pocket because you can because she likes you too that's what I think it is. And if by chance the vine don't want you, Alexis is always in your back pocket. So he brings up how, um, Ale Alexis brings up how, so I know you have, you know, connections with other people or whatever you're saying. You know, even though divine isn't, you know, relevant to me, I get that she's, re that she's relevant to you. But, you know what I'm saying, I know that. You know what I'm saying, like, and I'm just hearing how you and her, you know, is sharing time. And, you know what I'm saying, kissing or whatever. And eating strawberries or whatever. How should I feel? And he said, the same way I should feel when I hear about you and Carrie. I said, oh, shit. Okay. You know, <laughs> pots, meat kettle. Okay. Cook some water. And I'm like, it's just, you know, he's, he, he right. You hearing about me and somebody else, but I'm also hearing about you and someone else. But... But, London, the only reason she's entertaining Carrie is because you are entertaining Divine. That's it. That's it, bruh. You know what I'm saying? He brings up how you know I just be hearing things or whatever, but it's what it is. He then says, I wouldn't let anybody, you know what I'm saying, disturb what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have a story, you know what I'm saying? You know, me and Divine has a story, but there's they're separate stories. I'm looking like, London is trying to confuse Alexis to make her feel like, oh, this is me and you, baby. It's just me and you. Don't don't let anybody else distract us, okay? This is me and you, baby. No, London, no. London is a player, okay? London likes the game. London out here, silver and gold and people or whatever. I'm like, mm -mm. I don't like it any kind of way or whatever. So, Alexis, bring up, I got like a little bit of a doubt or whatever because you know what I'm seeing you doing other things or whatever, but I care for you. And that's why I feel some kind of way hearing about you and Divine. And I feel like London know what's between Carrie and, and Alexis isn't really real. I think he's aware that she's doing it solely because he has someone else. And the bad part is he don't even care. He going to keep not being able to decide between these two women. The crazy part is they need to just decide who, which one, I'll be, you know what? Ask him which pick. Pick one of us now. And if he can't pick, I I will leave. Because then if you two leave, he has to leave too. Because nobody else is feeling him. Well, Reba, but I don't think he's feeling Reba. But I feel like, I, make him choose. He's doing it because they're allowing him to. I, girl, I cannot. If, if, or if anything, Alexa, you should just fully engulf yourself into Carrie. 
period. And then see what London does. If London doesn't stop seeing the vine to get you back, then keep dating Gary. Okay. Now London brings up because he laughs when she say, um, I'm not gonna keep sitting here, you know, while you wait, you know what I'm saying, and picking choose like you straddling the fence. I'm not gonna keep waiting for you to pick and choose or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see what will happen. He laughs, okay, you know what I'm saying, but I don't have a competition. Yes, you do. He says, I, if I want something, I'll come for it. But he ain't came for you, Alexis. He hasn't, because if he did, it wouldn't be divine, and vice versa. I'm like, London ain't fooling me. I've dated a London. I've dated two Londons. I'm, I let both their asses go. Because, again, you know what I'm saying? You can't, I don't, mm, girl, no. This men who feel like you are an option because y'all not, y'all not exclusive. I don't do that. I don't, mm, no. No, thank you. I'm going to love and enjoy it. So, we then see Mario goes to meet with Tiny and her friends. It was an easy, breezy day. L- uh, Tiny and Mario are definitely one of the top three couples. They are. They have an actual connection. To me, they have more of a connection than Darren and Ashima, who swear up and down. They've been, you know what I'm saying, courting each other since day one. I, I don't see the connection. I see y'all hanging out together on, on the couch at one time, but that was really it. But, you know, with Tandy and Mario, when the, when they walked up, they kissed in the mouth. Okay? He ain't do that to Reva. When Reva left, they gave a little old sad hug. They dating. They kiss it in the mouth. Okay, give me another kiss. They're they're dating. Okay, so they're definitely a top three couple. Um, they embrace like lovers do. It is what it is. The free it was her friend, her cousin. Um, it was a good. It wasn't no issues or whatever. You know, they did ask him about what's up with him and Reva. He said, "I'm just you know, I enjoy Tanya. I like Tanya. I enjoy her a lot. And I'm just kind of giving Reva a chance, a fair chance. Meaning, I know Reva don't have nobody." And I don't really like Reva. He don't he don't really like Reva. But I gave her a fair chance. I feel like that's fair. I feel like everybody should, should have done that. But again, he picking Tiny and Tiny picking him. And he said, I like how she, you know, gives me her all. Like she shows me affection. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whereas Reva is closed off like or whatever. So he liked that. I think that's smart. When you're dating somebody, you're supposed to act interested in them. Not not easy, not gullible, not MC. You know, don't give up the point I need, but you show that you are wanting to be with them. You're open enough to where they don't, they don't have the question, like, well, dang, do, do she like me? She's so closed off. But I digress. Anyway, it was a great connection. It was what it was. We then see Kimber, who has her friends um, meet up with gray hair Brent. And, you know, for the most part, she brings up, I wasted so much time on Jimmy or whatever. So, now, I'm going to see what's up with Brent. And now, Brent said how, you know, I'm going to try to be more open. They say I'm close. I'm going to try to be more open and see what's up. Because there's a little bit of an attraction to Kimber. Because, again, this 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 is their first date. Again, this is Kimber and Gray Hair Brent's first date. So, he get in there or whatever. And they instantly, his, her friends are instantly asking question after question after question. Like, do you want this? you want that? Blah, blah, blah. You want kids, you want marriage. It's like, well, yeah, I want, I want kids. I want, I want marriage as well. Kimber then said, well, I want kids by next year. And he was like, oh, 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 okay, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> his thing is, I don't want anyone rushing me into having children. And her thing is, well, I'm in my 30s, and I don't want to wait. And I get both of their points, but I, I got his point more, which was, this is our first actual date. Like, we haven't really hung out until today. Like, so I can't say... Okay, yes, you're my girlfriend, and we're going to be together, and we're going to have kids. And I'm ready for kids next year with you. I don't know you yet. And the friend asked him, like, would you like Kimber? Like, is there attraction? He said, well, yeah. She then said, well, I think you should start courting. Like, you start dating. I'm looking like, well, God damn it. I mean, let them breathe a little bit, baby. And I don't, I, and I think this is the difference between, having an organic connection with somebody and it flows versus it's your first date, he meeting your friends, your friends is gunning for him, asking questions, other questions about marriage and babies, and then you're saying, like, I want a baby and me by, the, by next year. I want a birth a child by next year. And he's like, well, damn, I just, I, it's just, it's team too much. I think it was a way to say, I also want children, you know what I'm saying, you know, sooner rather than later. 
is what I would have said. But I mean, I digress. Anyway, you know, the friend said, well, my husband proposed to me after eight months. He said, oh, well, good for your husband. I said, good for your husband. Because, again, they was like, you know, why couldn't you see yourself married to her in a year? Again, it's the first date. I don't know her like that yet. Anyway, so, um, Brent, like, you know what I'm saying? This is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of whatever. It's a lot for a little at McDonald's today. Um, I'm just, he like, I'm just not ready to, you know, do all that right now. I'm like, Kimber girl, you may go home for Eva. I don't know. So, Divine had London meet her friends, and they was the same banger like everybody else. Um, I will say that's. Um, that's what we had on the silver. The silver was this, was this one. I will say that there is an ease that he has when he's with Divine that I don't feel like he has with Alexis. I feel like with Alexis, he's always figuring out what to say to her to run game. And when he's with Divine, he can't run game on her. He has to just say things. And when he get caught up on some kind of game lie that he's trying to say, he gets sung tat, Okay. Because he brings up how, um, because they were talking or whatever, cool, cool, cool. They bring up how he likes somebody else. And then they ask, like, well, you know, why was, was, what is it about her that, you know, makes her also a choice? He said, well, it's not one thing. It's just, you know, it's, it's just, you know, something, something about her or whatever. So they then said, well, if you had to choose between, like, Alexis and Nevada, who would you choose? He said, well, I, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. I, I wasn't prepared to do that today. And then Divine said, well, you did it at my house on your birthday. He's like, no, I didn't. He's just like, yes, you did. I asked you, and you said me. He said, I didn't, I didn't say that. Roll the tape. They then rolled the, the footage the footage of her asking him that. And he did say, well, I, oh, that's, I wasn't prepared for that. He then said, but of course, I would say you. So you answered the question before, and now you backpedaling the pussy popping or, or penis popping or whatever, and you, I don't know what to do. I, girl, bullshit again london like london likes to run game london is a handsome man he has you know little jewelry or whatever and he has a great smile so i feel like he's used to just getting over on women because you can see it a little bit what he's doing now but i digress okay so divine said oh well, if you can answer the question then you know what i'm saying i need to re to reevaluate this situation and he's like oh really Yes, really. And I'm happy she said that. So the men all get together, okay? Carrie says how even though he and Alexis have an 18-year age gap, he still likes her, has a connection, and he never thought that they would be, you know what I'm saying, getting closer than close. You know what I'm saying? London then says, well, I see potential potential in Alexis. I do. And Carrie looking like, you already got one. Leave me, Alexis, okay? But he said, I, I have, you know, there's something about her or whatever that I see, I see potential in. And we talk all the time or whatever, but Divine is also an amazing woman, a woman, so I'm stuck, I'm stuck in the middle of the road. You're not stuck. You should pick Divine. You're just being greedy. You want them both. And I feel like he should lose them both. I feel like Divine could go over to Brent, Alexis could stay with Carrie, and then uh, London can go home. Just saying. So, Mario says how he and Tiny Day was amazing. But him and Reva, not so much. You see, he brings about Reva... Friends grilled him a whole bunch, and it seemed like Reva just did not have his back to help him at all with the questions or whatever. Um, he said even though she knew the questions, she didn't like she didn't try to help him. I said because she don't cause she she's a ice box is where her heart used to be, okay? But she not Omarion. I'm just saying. So Brent then said that he felt with um Camber's friends things were tough mainly because they kept asking him questions about like the future. But down with their first date or whatever, like it is since like it, he said it was like a sense of urgency, and I didn't understand like why they was like rushing marriage and rushing kids. Like I just didn't get that conversation being the first conversation considering it was our first date, so it was just weird. London then say, well she she slid in my DMs. I say she what? So Kimber slid in London's DM per London. Now we didn't see no proof. Okay, he said he had proof, but he ain't seen show to us. So, but she slid in his DM saying how they would have pretty babies. And so the guy said they feel like Kimber is just running game to see who, you know what I'm saying, will bite. The same way Jimmy was. 
that may be why they liked each other. Darren says his date with Shima was fine except one red flag. That she does not want his dogs in the bedroom. They're like, man, you crazy. You gonna pick, pick uh, the, the dogs over the girl? He like, no. Tommy then said, bro, you know, why can't there be a compromise? Like, why can't the dogs just not be in the bedroom? People say, you both had dogs. They say, yes, I have dogs. I have a couple dogs. Again, but they, if the woman don't want them in the bedroom, you oblige that. He said, well, you know, you're right. That could be a conversation. I'm looking like, if you rather have dogs in your bedroom than your woman. I mean, y'all know what that means. So we then have the people meet up. So they pick the top three girls who will go home. So we see Brent meets up with Reva, you know what I'm saying, to discuss the wall that all the guys feel like she has up and they can't get to know her properly. She's like, well, did we, I just told you the same thing last time. Like, it's like we switched places and they did, okay? So, you know, she said, well, I've approached each guy. So, you know what I'm saying, I don't think I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, connected with anybody or whatever. He said, yeah, but like, do you let them in? Like, do you really allow them to get to know you. She's like, well, I, I guess I give to me or whatever I'm saying. So, you know, I, I guess I can open up more. So, she said, I'll do that. So, she's not going home, okay? We then see that Mario meets with Kimber, okay? And, and tell her, how, you know, the guy kind of feel like, you know what I'm saying, you be running game and everything or whatever. And so, you know, Kimber just brought her out like, really? He said, you know, this is, you know, now, no, whatever. And then, you know, um, he said, like, the guys feel like, you know what I'm saying, they just don't want to be, be in your way of you running game or whatever, so your time is up. I'm looking like, oh, it's just two people? They didn't even pick three. They picked two, Reva and Kimber. I told y'all, and Kimber is going home. And Kimber, her whole attitude, her, the look on her face right there, it's just like she went from having, like, she was bubbly. She was really bubbly. And then she had an instant attitude. Uh, instant attitude, like, oh, you know what, y'all are, you know what I'm saying, y'all are, you know what I'm saying, in my, in my way, whatever, so thank you for getting out my way, and I was like, girl, girl, she reminded me of Terrell when he left, I was like, I, girl, she said, I was just too loyal to Jimmy, okay, I was too loyal to Jimmy, and he, the man I'm supposed to meet and have a baby with or whatever is out there for me to be with, I said, girl, go ahead, be free, okay, again, Kimber had a side to her, in my opinion, that when she found out she wasn't going, that nice, bubbly Kimber kind of went away, and she was aggravated. But I feel like you couldn't be surprised. Just saying. Anyway, that was all that episode. So I will talk to y'all later. Peace.